Um, welcome everyone, welcome to the Virtual Venture Cafe. Our first time community members, a very, very, very special welcome to you. Welcome to the family. Uh, before I hand the session over to Danielle, agency and ARP, um, please remember to ask your questions using the chat box. If you ever have a question, we will have two opportunities uh, to read those questions to our presenters today. Uh, and with this, I would love to introduce Danielle Duplin, the co-founder and global launch director of Agency, our long-term partner. Uh, Agency is a worldwide innovation community for living longer and aging better. Agency combines co-working and agent-focused startups and enterprises at global CIC hubs with expert programming and an international community of innovators, some of who are with us today. Let me hand this session over to you, Danielle, and um, Thank you for creating such an amazing group and such an amazing experience that we are all excited to start. Excellent, all right. Well, thank you so much, Yulia. I really appreciate that intro and I appreciate all the behind the scenes magic that's happening right now. Um, so, uh, so hello everybody for the next 90 minutes or so, uh, we're gonna fill your day with innovation and I dare say a healthy dose of optimism especially for the older adults in our life and all the folks that we love and serve in our careers. And clearly in this pandemic, we're all feeling enormous stress and anxiety. It's also triggered what I'm calling uh, radical empathy around the globe for what it means to be old in our modern society. Uh, you know, we're starting to feel uh, what it might feel like to have your health at risk, to be socially isolated, to grapple with economic insecurity. And that's a siren call to entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs love solving wicked problems with the upside potential to change the world. And this is it. Aging is living and we're all living longer, thankfully. And we all wanna grow old on our own terms and full of vitality. So I do want to start off by thanking each and every one of the founders who are pouring heart and soul into their work. They each come to this work um, from a lived experience, either professionally or personally, that has really moved them to solve for the folks um, that, you're, that you'll hear about. I want to thank the Venture Cafe uh, and all the production teams and the judges behind the scenes who are making our pitch fest shine today. And I want to thank uh, each and every one of you who are tuning in on this fine day uh, to listen to these startup pitch fests and to provide your valuable feedback along the way. Um, it's gold. It's gold for the startups to hear what you're thinking, how it's resonating with you, how you might want to partner or collaborate or potentially be a customer. So please share generously and we will uh, give you that link uh, in the chat for you to give your feedback. And of course, we want to thank our partner, AARP Innovation Labs, our sponsor and catalyst for this pitch fest. So please join me in welcoming Jacqueline Baker, Vice President of Startup Programming for AARP Innovation Labs, to say a few words. Welcome, Jacqueline. Thank you. Hi, Danielle. It's wonderful uh -huh. to see your face and it's wonderful to see so many people on today. We are just as excited as you are about seeing some cutting edge startups that are truly solving for some of the epidemic issues that many of us, many of our parents, many of our grandparents, many of our friends face. And so we're excited, truly, truly to get this, this show on the road. Let me just share a few things with you. Um, as Danielle mentioned, I have the humbling honor to serve as the Vice President of Startup Programming at AARP Innovation Labs. And um, to bring you up to speed, if you didn't know that we had an innovation lab, I just want to share with you a little bit about what we're doing over there. Of course, we're in the startup space. We are always on the hunt for some of the best and brightest startups from all over the world who are solving epidemic issues in the areas of health tech, fintech, and in self-fulfillment as well. Um, we uh, do that work in many different ways from collaborating with dynamic organizations um, like today's host um, to also collaborating with world-class accelerators from all over the world as well. So we're, start, we're excited to be in the startup space. We're excited to co-develop alongside startups that are doing innovative and cutting edge things. We're also excited and committed to the design thinking space, making sure that we're keeping the human at the center of what we're doing. And we are also still very much committed to the thought leadership space. Thought leadership looks a whole lot different than it used to. It used to involve um, investing in and going to conferences face to face, but we're still doing that work, but just virtually. 
truly right now, what is it, mid-July, we would be hot and heavy on planes quite a bit, trying to make our way from one pitch event to the next. And we preach the importance of being nimble and being flexible. And we have had, we've had to eat our own words, right? Not that we're <laughs> preaching, not that we're practicing what we've been preaching, but this year, every single one of us on today's, um, on today's pitch platform, we've had to truly be nimble and, and dig deep and be flexible with the way that we're executing uh, the things that we're doing in our various parts of the world. And so for us, we are now doing what I like to call a pitch pivot. We are, this is our fifth pitch competition stop. We're still very much committed to the pitch space, but we're doing so virtually. And so for all of you who are listening on today, um, who are having, you're having any inkling of um, anxiety or apprehension about moving forward, about continuing what you're doing. I want you to know that we're in this together. We're all pivoting and we're all being flexible. And we're all finding creative ways to get this work that we know is so very important done. I mentioned earlier that we engage with startups mostly in the health tech and fintech space. And that's the reason why um, today's challenge statement, every single one of the startups are answering a call for a challenge. And today's challenge was really focused on well-being, fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle, and identifying some cutting edge and interesting approaches to enhancing vitality in that space. And so you'll hear from nine Yes, nine. To be honest with you, when Danielle told me that there were going to be nine startups, I was like, Danielle, what are, what are we doing here? Are we going to have time for that? Um, normally, we skew a little bit lower, but I'm excited that we are actually going to welcome nine startups today to pitch. Um, I've gotten a chance to get a sneak peek at all nine of them, um, but I'm really curious to see the feedback. I'm curious to, of course, um, see their pitches because I have not seen them pitch, and I am very excited about the things that they're going to do in the near future. Um, the, the winning startup today will have the opportunity to join us for the AARP Innovation Labs Grand Pitch Finale, which is a pretty massive, massively produced event that we host every fall. We will be doing that virtually on October 1st. And if you're interested in viewing that particular pitch competition, which is our culmination of all our pitch competition stops, why don't you head over to AARPInnovationLabs.org and sign up to stay connected with us, or also tune your eyes to our social media platforms. That's AARP iLabs on Instagram and also on Twitter. So I, I thank you for being here today. I thank you for your commitment and your interest in this space. We all know that we're all trying to live and we're trying to live well. So I don't care if you're seven or you're 97 on today's webinar, the things that are being presented are impacting our lives and the lives of the people that we love. So thank you for being here and I'm looking forward to seeing the show get started. Thank you, Jacqueline. And indeed, each one of us could potentially be customers of all the products and services that we're gonna see today at some point in our lives. And, uh, and I do want to point out that, yes, we do have nine startups, and we're very excited about that. But they also were selected uh, through a rigorous set of vetting criteria uh, from among over 100 companies that applied or that we sourced through the Captains of Innovation Consultancy Group. So um, we're very excited. Um, there's so many more um, folks that we can introduce to, to each of you. So we'll continue to run Pitch Fest so, uh, for tonight. We're gonna focus on, uh, on these uh, companies that are focused on vitality. And to help us uh, kind of dig in and ask some really insightful questions and to learn more about the teams after they pitch, um, we're excited to introduce you to three of our judges uh, who represent different stakeholders um, in the ecosystem. So first I'd like to welcome Catherine Downs from the Executive Office of Elder Affairs here in Massachusetts. So Catherine, say hello. Hi everyone. Um, so my name is Catherine Downs and I'm the policy director for the Massachusetts Executive Office of Elder Affairs or EOEA for short. Um, and just to give you guys a little bit of context about our state agency, um, we're the state's unit on aging. So every state in the US and territory has state unit on aging that provides a variety of um, federal and state funded home and community based services um, to basically keep people able to age in home and able to age in community. Um, so that includes home care, protective services, nutrition and family caregiver support. Um, my role as policy director, I have the privilege of getting to think about how to make the Commonwealth of Massachusetts the most age friendly state where people can grow up and grow old together. Um, like Danielle alluded to, we are all aging. So it's really exciting to be here today and I'm very excited to hear from our nine startups. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. And next up is Sarah Quist from Cigna Insurance. As we know, insurance is a huge 
uh, factor in, in helping folks get access to, to the services that they need. So we're super excited to have Sarah here. We'll say hello. Thank you, Danielle. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I am the Director of Community Engagement for Cigna New England, and I have the privilege of connecting and collaborating with nonprofit organizations and health systems to identify the alignment of our missions and how we can collectively improve the health, well-being, and peace of mind of our community members. So our local community strategy focuses on two populations, youth and caregivers of the aging population. And I also work closely with our innovation team on relevant tests and learns for products and services that would enhance our customer experience. So as Danielle mentioned, um, of all ages. Um, I will note that prior to this role, I had nearly two decades of experience in branding and marketing um, in consumer products, financial services, and I also launched a startup in 2006. So I have a personal oh. admiration for all of your work here today, the blood, sweat, and tears, all of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I will all finally know I'm a daughter of a soon-to-be 88-year-old father. Uh, he'll turn 88 next week. My mother is 78 years old, so I am very much in tune with the aging population from that perspective and just so thrilled to hear all of your innovations today and thanks for all of your hard work. Excellent, thank you, Sarah, welcome. And Aparna, Aparna Saha uh, represents uh, the investor side. So Aparna is an angel investor and also spent a good amount of time at the Center for Medicaid Services. So Aparna, say hello. Thank you, Danielle, and thank you so much for having me. Um, as Danielle mentioned, my name is Aparna Saha. I am an angel investor, and I founded Healthovation, my company, to better leverage my expertise across strategy consulting, pharma, and health policy to support tech-enabled healthcare startups um, through early stage investing and advising. So I started Healthovation after I left the CMS Innovation Center. And for those of you who are less familiar, it was funded by the Affordable Care Act in 2010 with $10 billion and statutory waiver authority to invest in innovative payment and delivery models, primarily to improve access and the experience of care, all while reducing the cost for Medicare and Medicare, uh, Medicaid beneficiaries. So I'm so very excited to be here um, because I do have this special focus on the aging population and for our seniors. So I look forward to hearing from these nine really exciting companies. Thank you. Thank you, Parna. All right, well, let's get to it then. So the format for the Pitch Fest is each startup will have five minutes to tell you a little bit about their company, give you a little bit of demo, and talk about their go-to-market strategy and some of the strategic partnerships that they have. Uh, following uh, their five-minute pitch, uh, the judges will have three minutes to ask questions. Uh, that way you'll get deeper insight to how they're thinking and give the startups a total of eight minutes to present. Now, along the way, um, we would love for you to give the startups feedback. And we're going to do that through an anonymous uh, Google form. So Justin's going to pop that into the chat. Um, and so you'll see each of the teams listed there. Uh, we'd love for you to um, share your thoughts. Um, and, and of course, as I said, it will be anonymous. Uh, so let's get going. Our first team is Attention Grace. So one of the things you're hearing a lot about is social isolation of older adults. And one thing that we do know is it doesn't happen all at once. It kind of is a chipping away at, at kind of making your world a little bit smaller because getting out is a little harder or maybe you're limited in some of your, your functionality or you, um, you're just kind of embarrassed about some of the things that come along with growing older. And uh, so our team at Attention Grace has an answer for that, that makes you feel dignified. So please welcome Mia Aprititi and Alexandra Fennell. Take it away, Attention Grace. And I'm gonna stop sharing so you guys can pop on. Great. My goodness, hold on. Now I'm frozen. <laughs> hold on here. That's right. Uh, sorry about that. Thanks, Danielle, for the introduction. And I am uh, Mia Abrazizi. I'm so happy to be presenting to you and telling you more about Attention Grace. 
this is a picture of my mom and I. This is taken a couple of years ago. Um, I was shocked to walk in on my mom one afternoon and she was there stuffing um, a adult diaper, heavy adult diaper into the plastic sleeve that the newspaper came in. Uh, before that moment, I had absolutely no idea that my mother struggled with incontinence. Um, so of course I was there rushing to help to get whatever she needed, better products, um, whatever she needed. She said to me, gosh, don't bother. Uh, they're all the same. Don't worry about it and trouble yourself. And you know, my mom is this lovely uh, pearl wearing Saks Fifth Avenue shopping um, discerning woman. And for me, and it was really, um, it was a shock to see her uh, resign to a suction of brands and products that were undifferentiated, were dismal and utilitarian. And, and she wasn't alone. You know, the sad truth was that at some point in our lives, personal care became anything but personal until now. Attention Grace is the first sustainable wellness brand for women as they age. We are one collection at a time. We help women elegantly tackle life's inconvenient truths with thoughtfully tailored solutions, starting with bladder weakness. Did you know that one in every three women experiences some level of bladder weakness, but an overwhelming 92% of those women are using period products or no products at all because they are so turned off by incontinence products. This can be crippling. Bladder leakage is not just inconvenient, it can be incredibly damaging to a woman's well-being. The shame and anxiety of leaks can cause women to isolate themselves from others because they are too afraid to go out or reduce their liquid intake to the point of perpetual dehydration. And dehydration as we age is really dangerous. Um, it damages skin health, it can lead to brain fog, which can trigger dementia. And this is so serious. It's also a seriously large market. We're talking 19 million women in the US and uh, projected to grow over 30% in the next four years in a market opportunity of $2.5 billion. We had designed Attention Grace to woo that 92% of women, proving to them there is a better way. Uh, women see themselves in Attention Grace products uh, because we invested in building a brand, not just a product. We prioritize beautiful design. We committed to using soft, breathable, natural materials uh, and have a patented lightning quick absorption that is both body and earth friendly. All discreetly delivered to your door as often as you need it. Let's take a look at the products. We are introducing initially liners, hybrid pads, moderate pads, heavy pads, and a brief. All these products are, have both the top and back sheet that is derived from sugarcane base, which is a renewable resource. Not only is it renewable, but it's also softer and gentler on your skin. Also, all Attention Grace products don't use dyes, and all of our, our products are TFC certified, which means they're totally chlorine free. So again, gentler on your skin and gentler on the body. Also our packaging, it's a hunt over 70% derived from sugarcane waste. So more sustainable and by uh, 2021 will be 100% derived from sugarcane waste. Attention Grace is building a movement and a marketplace uh, on the foundation of a D2C subscription model and a vibrant community, growing community. We launched with a wait list of 10,000 women. 89 year old women are DMing us on Facebook uh, to talk about our products. It's also multi-generational attention grace. We have um, women buying briefs for their mothers, pads for themselves, and starter kits for their pregnant daughters. Women not only want our products, but they're seeking us out and signing up. Let's talk a little bit about our growth strategy. We peak interest in court lead generation through direct mail, email marketing, focused organic and paid social media campaigns, and support those efforts with paid search. Building trust and in, in inspiring trial with our consumer is critical. So Attention Grace has formed strategic partnerships with, strategic, with senior living communities, concierge medical groups, as well as, pelvic health, as well as pelvic health groups. All ready to recommend Attention Grace products and provide sampling opportunities to their powerful communities. Word of mouth is also essential. We know that behind every empowered woman is another woman with shared values, and even better, a discount code. Another tactic that's critical to us. Um, 
we let's talk about the team. Alex and I are the co-founders. I'm running operations and the business, and Alex owns brand communications and brand and communications and strategy. We're VC backed and have a talented group of advisors on our team helping us lead the way. And lastly, what do we need from you? If you believe that women deserve to be seen and celebrated as they age, then help us spread the word about Attention Grace. Tell 10 women you know about Attention Grace, the first sustainable wellness brand for women as they age. Tell them to sign up for our email list, to join us for our AMAs when we talk with our doctors about managing our health and wellness. It's time for personal care to feel personal again. Please join us. Thanks very much. That was excellent. Thank you so much, Mia. Judges. You're welcome. Great. Terrific, Mia. Thank you so much for that excellent presentation and congratulations. Um, definitely, you've created a product in an underinvested area. Can you talk to us a little bit more about your manufacturing and what that means for your cost of goods? Yes, so we're manufacturing over in Europe. Uh, we have distribute. We have manufacturing partners both in uh, Belgium, uh, Czechoslovakia, and Italy. So we're producing products over there. As you know, sustainability is one of the core tenets of uh, European manufacturing. We chose to partner with someone where sustainability was one of their uh, biggest pillars. All of our factories are CO2 neutral. Um, so we are importing products. Our margins are uh, greater than 50%. So we are able to import and, and be competitive um, with all the major branded players in the space. So obviously not competing with some of the um, more in, in, in um, uh, institutional products. Thank you. You're welcome. Mia, I know you and I'm familiar with your products. I absolutely... Yeah love what you guys are doing at Attention Grace in terms of completely destigmatizing incontinence and making it more of a wellness brand. Um, I absolutely love it. Uh, my question is around kind of your target customer. So you mentioned a couple of different segments, right? You know, you have the older adult, the person who already is experiencing the incontinence issues. You mentioned mm -hmm. the family caregivers, like a daughter or son who might recognize that your brand is a good fit for mom. Um, and then you recognize that, you know, there's people kind of on the other end of the age spectrum, like me, who's eight months pregnant, <laughs> who could probably benefit from some of your products. Um, so I'm just curious if there's a prioritization in kind of your go-to-market strategy or if, um, you know, it's a, a attack all three at once. Yeah, no, uh, we uh, built our model around a more moderate user. So that's someone that uses mo a, a combination of products throughout the day. They may use a brief at night for overnight. They may use a pad during the day. Uh, they may use a bed pad at night as well. So this kind of a moderate user is um, the bulk of our financial model. So that's a 65 plus, although surprisingly, we've done a little bit more research and it tends to even go, run a little bit younger than that. But generally 65 plus has been the consumer that um, we've been targeting. Great, thanks. Thanks, you're welcome. Hi there, Mia. Great presentation. Um, Thanks, Sarah. And great innovation. So I'm curious what you see as your biggest challenge over the next, I'll say, even 90 days, just given the environment we're in and we're living hour to hour at times. Um, <laughs> I would love to hear kind of um, how, how you see current state um, and you know, what you're doing to um, address that for your specific company. Yes, we actually see this as a huge opportunity. Um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, when Catherine talked about the, the caregivers, so someone like myself or my partner, Alex, who are caring for elderly parents, this enables, you know, Attention Grace is a solution that enables you to make sure products delivered on time for your loved one when you need it. So that's a big opportunity, but we're also seeing um, people are looking for a solution that can be delivered directly to your door. And during these times of COVID, any opportunity to um, you know, not go out, have to go out to the store is a great um, opportunity. So the other part of it is though that, um, you know, a lot of older people find Amazon overwhelming. So, you know, you could say to me, gosh, you can get overnight delivery from Amazon in two day prime, right? What's the big deal? But we found that a lot of people that use Amazon find, find that um, 
that platform and that user experience very overwhelming. You can see the way we designed Attention Grace. It's, it's sort of very thoughtfully considered. We kept uh, all the, the, the type is larger. The, um, the amount of content we put on there is a lot more, is, is reduced. The way we use imagery is more modern. So we're really, um, and that, so that customer experience, I think is really geared to that user, uh, this user demographic. And, you know, even the way we've maintained it, that the navigation on the left and right side always stays with you. You don't have to go hunt for the, the um, little bars at the top to go and navigate to where you need to go next. So we've intentionally designed this to uh, cater to an older demographic. But and Mia, with fine. that, I apologize, I apologize, but we are out of time. So of course. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so there's a great dynamic happening um, with the audience. Um, they're posing questions in the Q&A. Um, so Mia, if you, if you want to address some of those questions offline while we uh, get ready for our next um, startup to pitch, that would be great. Um, also, for those of you who uh, want to meet with any one of these startups, um, hang around for the end of the Pitch Fest and join the uh, Venture Cafe uh, Global Remo Room. We'll put the link in there. And you'll get a chance to meet the startups directly as well. So we have lots of different ways that, um, that you can have access. All right. Um, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen again and introduce our next presenter. All right, so of all the many heartbreaking stories that we're hearing during the pandemic, uh, chief among them is um, the little joys in our lives that have really been disrupted, um, including the precious time that grandparents get to spend with their grandchildren. So our next founder has a really creative and beautiful idea for that. Please join me in welcoming Michael Coles, the founder of Choose Your Reader. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. And I will stop sharing so you can get set up. All right. So Choose Your Reader is a mobile app and we use stories to connect families across time and space. So with Choose Your Reader, essentially any time can be story time. not there we go so any time can be story time and what we say when we say that we mean that essentially you're able to really share with the people that are going to matter with you and so for example if you're in the military or if you're a traveling but grandparents my experience was that I was essentially going through a divorce I had a son and I wasn't able to spend that time with him that I wanted to when we were doing story time so I wanted to find a way that I could share that experience and that was my draw to this. But again, if you're a grandparent and you're separated during the coronavirus, this is an opportunity for you to basically connect using story time. So the other piece to this is that we are also looking at uh, being able to say that this can connect you through this mobile app. You log in and I wanna show you kind of how this thing works. You've got this intuitive steps here. Uh, the process is essentially that you're gonna record a story using the mobile app. You're using your voice and you're speaking into the phone or tablet and you're going to be able to record and then you're going to be able to then share that story and they can hear it as well. So the thing we've got, we've got some categories here that you can actually uh, take a look at and find something that you want. We've got a license agreement with uh, highlights. You can see at the bottom there, a magazine. We've got their content on the app. We also have the ability to uh, go through and actually do a search for a story if you want to be able to uh, search for a prince, a princess, a dog, whatever that might be. Um, but once you're inside the category, if you pick a category, you see the stories that are available to you. The next thing that you're going to be able to do then is actually record that story. So you step in and you're going to press the record button the app actually records your voice into your device. And so uh, the process, if you can think of something like karaoke, uh, we're going to use that kind of an interface where we've got a highlighted words, you follow along with those words in order to be able to then sync your voice to the actual displayed words on the screen. Uh, now, perhaps you're going a little too fast or a little too slow, adjust the speed of the 
the highlighting so that you can actually keep up and make sure that your pace and the words are highlighted. Because if you know how kids learn to read, they learn to read by having the words pointed to them. And so since you're not there to do that, the app does that for you. So once you're through this process, you're essentially creating this digital book and you're going to have your own digital library with your voice stored in the app. Uh, now that's great, that's a good start, but we took it the next step further and said, you're gonna wanna be able to then share that with one person or with millions, whoever you wanna share that with via email, text, or also WhatsApp. And the great thing about WhatsApp is that we're available in 160 countries because we're a mobile platform. So uh, the ability to share those across different platforms, Apple to Android, across different countries, we use WhatsApp to do that as well. Uh, content, show you a couple of things. These are the first four books that I wrote for my son uh, before the app even existed. And so created that for him to be able to share. Uh, but then, of course, the universe of content is really large. The public domain is huge. And then we also have first time authors. We just closed our first contest at the end of June 30th uh, for new authors to present their works. And so we've got an opportunity for people to get their content on our platform as well. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is you can take a single story. And if, for example, you do that, you can translate that into other languages. So if you speak Spanish, if you speak French, right? My son, he actually speaks English, Spanish, and Mandarin. And so you can see here, we take the same story and allow him to see it. Once he learns it in one language, it's very easy to then map that across to a second language. So there's a huge educational component as well. The other thing is, this is a digital heirloom. So if you record a story once, you're gonna have it forever. And then once you've shared that story, you're going to get a notification back when it's heard so that you're able to then have that digital hug that says, hey, we've got this story and I've heard it and it's great. So it's for kids, it's for adults, it's parents, it's for grandparents. This whole universe is going to benefit from that. We've got a $50 annual subscription. We use affiliate marketing with nonprofits to spread word about the program. And we've got licensing available for people that want to reskin the app. Last is our team, a great team that's helped me pull this off and bring it together. And hopefully you'll join us by downloading the app and sharing it today. That is Choose Your Reader. Oh, it makes me cry every time. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thank you. All right. And we're getting some great feedback too uh, from the audience. So after this, please go ahead and, and answer their questions. But first, our judges. Will do. Yeah, so Michael, this is Catherine. Thank you so much for sharing more about your product and sharing your personal story that really launched um, this incredible tool. Um, my question is, you know, could you tell us a little bit more about how people learn about you and choose your reader? Um, so I love the idea that grandparents or, you know, other kinship relatives could use this and, and leave it as either a legacy mechanism or um, just kind of sharing stories with, you know, younger relatives or friends in their network. But how do people learn about Choose Your Reader? Yeah, so we are, as you might imagine, heavily active on social media. Uh, we're also the affiliate marketing program that I mentioned. Uh, I've been involved in nonprofit work for my entire legal career. I'm a lawyer in my, my day job. So we created a platform where nonprofits can actually uh, take the, the app, we give them a branded web portal, and then they share that amongst all their supporters and followers, and basically we give them a percentage of the revenue. So we're actually supporting nonprofit missions as well as spreading the word about the app. So we're doing that in two ways, sort of direct to consumer marketing, but then also uh, letting other organizations be our marketing arm and benefit from that as well. It's really beautiful. Can I ask, I know I'm only supposed to ask one question, but have you, <laughs> have you engaged with um, like hospice or palliative care organizations as part of the nonprofit affiliate program? Yeah, so we are just now, we launched that uh, sort of affiliate marketing in June. And yes, that's the plan is to be able to do that. I remember when I was, I think, nine to 10 years old, I had a, a relationship with a, a senior nursing center through my school. And we would go there uh, once a month to be there with these seniors. And so we want to do something similar where we can give schools a chance to connect with certain senior communities and allow that literacy component as well as the relationship component to benefit both sides. Great, thanks. 
So I'll go next, um, Michael, great presentation and um, love the product. Um, it, and I love the fact that it's based on social connections because those are so important these days and will continue to be. Um, have you thought about how you can, um, I guess, magnify or um, have the trickle effect of those readings beyond your immediate community? So could you put those um, readings available to some of the nonprofits that you're giving kind of the revenue back um, so that kids, and maybe it's other nonprofits that are not part of the marketing program, but um, maybe there's homeless shelters or other um, boys and girls clubs, thing, people that would benefit from hearing the stories, even if they didn't know who was reading it. Yeah, so certainly relationship is the beginning of that. But what we're looking at, um, I've had a couple of conversations with someone who is a, a Sesame Street voice over artist. And so talking to her about creating a specific character inside the app that yes, you can always go back and that one character has read a, a variety of stories and then mapping that over to the foreign language side because perhaps you, know, you want a child to learn Spanish but you don't speak Spanish. Uh, a lot of people realize that that's something that can be done uh, but they don't have the ability. So yes, same idea. Have a Spanish speaker record that content and then you can go to our website and download it. So that's something that we intend to launch at the end of this year. That's great. Michael, thank you for such an excellent presentation and this really is an amazing product. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your pricing strategy and how you came up with that? Yeah, so in the beginning, I looked at a per book model and I also considered a monthly revenue model versus the annual. And when I looked at those three, first of all, the per book model created a bunch of transactions and I was going to get eaten alive with just transactional fees that, and then the administrative piece of managing each of those transactions. And I thought, you know what, I'm building this as much for the, the public as for myself. How do I want to interact with this? And I want to interact with this as a single payment I don't have to worry about the platinum level and the this level. I want full access, one price, without any of these surprises that I need to upgrade down the road. And so I decided on, uh, initially it was $5 a month, and then that was $60 per year. And then I said, okay, $50 per year is a reasonable number that I can charge in order to make revenue, but also be able to sort of give as broad access as possible. And then separately, uh, the business model has this sort of reskinning concept where we can uh, take the platform and make it available for someone like a school or a nursing home or any other organization. They can reskin it, and that's a separate price that's different from that. Beautiful. Michael, this was very, very inspiring. Again, there's a lot of great questions coming through on the Q&A and the chat, so have at it, and um, we look, can't wait to see how this, uh, how this grows. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to skip sharing my screen. I think there's too much going on. So um, Coleman, why don't you get set up uh, with the sharing your screen while I, while I introduce you. Um, so we heard from Attention Grace about uh, bladder leakage. Um, and, you know, what's the opposite side of that is staying hydrated. Um, so it's so important, as we heard, um, for your health and well-being to stay hydrated. But as we age, our uh, thirst sensation starts to decrease. And so we have to be reminded. Um, so we're super excited to introduce you to Coleman Iverson, the founder of Hydrate Spark. Take it away, Coleman. Yeah, thanks so much. So, yep, I'm the CEO and co founder of Hydrate Spark, your partner in shaping healthy habits. One second here. So, when I was in high school, I worked as a dietary aide at a nursing home. And after residence aid, I went around emptying all the undrunk liquids each meal into a five gallon bucket. And at the end, it almost filled the bucket each time. So I was amazed at how little was being drunk at these dinners. And even more amazed when I learned that about 75% of Americans are chronically dehydrated every day. And hydration has a direct impact on areas of health like your kidneys, energy, cognition, mood, blood glucose levels, and more. And in fact, dehydration is a $1 billion problem for elderly patients, a $2 billion problem for kidney stones, and a staggering $5 billion problem for hospital admissions due to dehydration alone. And that's just in the US. Which is why we created an easy to use smart bottle 
that's approved by four generations and has that cool factor that will make your teenage grandchildren or great grandchildren jealous. So what makes Hydrate Spark unique? Hydrate Spark bottles blink throughout the day to remind you to drink and sync how much you've drunk via Bluetooth to the Hydrate Spark app. So better health at home and on the go is as simple as blink, drink, sync. And with our new steel bottle, it's easier than ever to use with a more vibrant glow and compact rechargeable sensor. This new bottle also comes in multiple sizes with easy to open chug and straw lids and a vacuum insulated design to keep drinks cold. So when you're drinking from this bottle, you'll be sure to stay hydrated and in style. So Hydrate Spark has developed two types of sensing technology for their bottles to accurately measure water intake. And this has been validated and proven um, by the Mayo Clinic and the visual reminder, blink means drink. So it's also been clinically proven to change habits by helping people remember to drink and increasing urine output. And this trial at the Mayo Clinic was for kidney stone patients, but it's also relevant for incontinence in the aging population to improve urine output. And the Hydrate Spark app that the bottle syncs to tracks water drunk via Bluetooth. And a dynamic hydration goal is calculated throughout the day based on personal parameters and activity. Or you can set a manual goal based on your care provider's recommendation. You can view your hydration history over time. And you can keep an eye on friends and family. You can even receive reminders to drink throughout the day. And if you can't find your bottle, Hydrate Spark even has a Find My Bottle feature in the app. So, how is Hydrate Spark monetizing? Bottle sales through partnerships, clinical trials, retail, and a roadmap of future software and physical products that we have in the, in the future here. And our growth strategy. Um, it's primarily revolved around a remote monitoring platform called Hydrate Health. So this clinically proven platform optimizes hydration with our smart blinking water bottle Hydrate Spark app to track hydration data and a remote hydration monitoring dashboard that allows loved ones and caregivers to monitor their aging parents or patients. Hydrate Health makes it easy for care providers to monitor multiple residents at a nursing home, doctors to monitor patients living at home, or loved ones to keep an eye on their parents or grandparents. It gives you in-depth timeline of hydration data for individual participants, allowing for greater insights on individual hydration needs and how those can correlate to other health factors such as blood pressure and blood glucose levels. And you can encourage users with custom notifications that you type up yourself and engage people with a fun family and community challenge. So a little bit more about the company. We have a strong leadership team in place to help the company scale, including myself and my co-founder, Alex Hambrock, and a handful of advisors and senior staff. Now we just need the ecosystem to scale. So the bottle is just part of the equation. To change the conversation around hydration for healthy living and aging at home, it's going to take an ecosystem of partners to scale. We hope that AARP will join us on this journey. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Coleman. All right, judges. What lit yeah. up for you? Ha ha ha. All right. So I'll judges. get <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll get started. So really interesting. I'm not gonna lie, I might be running out to buy one uh, shortly for myself. Um, but I know we're here to talk about the aging population specifically. So would love to hear kind of how you're approaching the messaging and um, are you really targeting that older population or are you trying to reach the caregivers to buy it for them or a nursing home at both? Like I think about my parents, you're right. They don't really like drinking water. Um, and I mm -hmm. can't say I'm going to change them like they, that they would like be like, oh yeah, I need to start drinking more. But maybe if I kind of sway them 
Um, so yeah, here. that's a good question. Just like in one of those first slides I showed how it's kind of spanned four generations. So you can either target each of those people individually or target kind of the sandwich generation who might be buying it for their mom or their grandma. Um, so there's definitely a direct to consumer play that we've kind of initially launched our product under, but also the messaging is directed towards nursing homes and insurance providers to use this as kind of a monitoring system so that they can actually ensure that people are meeting their hydration goals and consistently drinking enough water because it's such a good preventative medicine that it's a great way to track to make sure people are kind of compliant with how much they should be drinking to stay as healthy as they possibly can. Great. Thanks so much, Coleman. Um, really innovative way of thinking about this. Given all the different apps that are out there, primarily around fitness, are you thinking or are you currently integrating with other solutions, whether it be Apple's My Health or My Fitness Pal and, and others? Yep, so we actually integrate with both of those as well as Withings, which is kind of the Fitbit in France, Fitbit, Apple Health, Garmin, um, and Google Fit. So we track people's step data or their activity data from those connected apps or an Apple Watch um, so that we actually adjust that dynamic hydration goal I was talking about each day based on a person's activity. And for the apps that actually do support water tracking, we push that data back into it so people can see a complete picture of their health in the app that they're used to using. And I apologize, I do have a quick follow-up question because I know Danielle's gonna make fun of me. Um, I forget whether you uh, presented your pricing model, whether it's a one-time price or a subscription model. Yep, so for the bottle, it's a one-time purchase, and that also comes with the app, which is free um, to download for both iOS and Android. And then the actual subscription to Hydrate Health is dependent on Sorry, I have a Google by me and she's talking. Um, uh, the subscription for Hydrate Health is dependent on user base and size and just kind of what features you want to use. So that's, that's a subscription software model. Thank you. And Coleman, um, awesome product. I was like, I need my water bottle to have a find my water bottle feature on it. Because that's <laughs> like, you know, during COVID, not such an issue. But <laughs> pre-COVID was a really big problem of mine. Um, your product is really cool. It seems like a high tech kind of product. So I want to go back to Sarah's point about messaging because um, mm -hmm. I could totally see family caregivers. My mother would buy this in a heartbeat because my grandmother does not drink enough water. Um, but in terms of messaging to the older adult consumer, which we know is really diverse, but it spans a great age range, right? Um, how have you thought about that in terms of your marketing and messaging? Yeah, so one thing we always like to say is water is the fountain of youth. So if you want to feel younger, have kind of flexible joints, want to stay regular and whatnot, you have to drink enough water. And this is the best and easiest way to do that. Yes, there's a ton of water bottles out there, but none of them have the clinical science for behavior change. And also just the blinking factor, which seems kind of fun and playful. But at the end of the day, that's strictly based on science, just like Pavlov's dogs, where bell meant it's time for food. Blink means it's time to drink. So it's a really easy to use product for that generation. Um, and it's really easy to set up. So we see it as a great tool for them. And with that, we are going to have to uh, say thank you, Coleman. We really appreciate uh, how you're thinking about hydration, which clearly matters for everybody. So uh, we look forward to seeing how you shift kind of the design and the messaging or add, you know, the older adult market uh, to your product line. So thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Um, yes. Okay. So um, before we introduce our next speaker, just a reminder to all of you who are um, out there listening, um, thank you so much for putting your questions into the chat. I see folks have also put questions into the Q&A. Just a quick thing, if you could, because we're getting a lot in, make sure you put the company name right at the beginning of your question. Um, so as our speakers kind of go back in, they can find the ones that relate to them. Okay, um, and also fill out that Google form as well. Um, all right now, so how many of you during COVID were like stuck at home, opening your pantry and trying to figure out what to cook with whatever was left over in there? Um, you know, there's a lot of chefs out there who are, you know, putting together like creative recipes for like, you know, minimal ingredients and whatnot. 
Well, imagine uh, how much harder it would be if you were on a very restrictive diet um, or if different members in your house had different chronic conditions where you still want to make beautiful meals, but maybe even the ingredients were different for each member, fam uh, uh, member of your family. So our next uh, founder has an incredibly lovely way to make eating be full of joy again and also be good for you. So please join me in welcoming Sean Chavis, founder of Living Group, uh, Living Book. Thank you so much. That introduction makes me want to cry. <laughs> well, you make me smile. <laughs> cool. I'm Sean Chavis, and I'm the founder of Living Book, and we offer customizable cookbooks and habit change planners for chronic conditions. I have a good friend, Nicole, and she was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. Her doctor gave her a long random list of food like this um, of, that she couldn't eat anymore. And Nicole called me crying, asking for help, figuring out what she could eat. Nicole also called me because I've been a development editor for Time Inc. Books, where I specialized in healthy cookbooks. And when she called, I knew there had to be a better way to help her make this major change for her life. What if instead Nicole could have had a personalized cookbook with recipes for food that she likes already modified for her diet condition. This is Living Book. <clears throat> Six in 10 adults in the United States have a chronic disease. When you look at the group of people between 45 and 64 years old, half have two or more chronic conditions. When doctors diagnose people with a chronic disease that requires diet change, 71% of the time, they only give verbal advice or a list of food from their doctors. And now imagine if you have two or more chronic diseases and you're trying to sift through two different lists just to figure out what to eat. It's overwhelming and it's no wonder that adherence to dietary lifestyle change is as low as 20%. Um, so if we could flip this around, if we could get people to eat a healthy meal 20% more often than they already do, it would save $47 billion a year in annual health care costs. Um, and we, we did research and found two problems. People said that number one, they needed just practical help figuring out how to make a meal with those lists that they get. And number two, help making lifestyle change last. So Living Book Solution makes it easy to change your diet for a chronic disease and it's all in one box. You get a customizable shoppable cookbook with a habit change planner. Um, so let's use my friend Nicole as an example. Nicole could come to the Living Book responsive app and create a profile. And then Living Book shows her a list of recipes that match her needs and preferences. And she chooses her favorite recipes to create her own one of a kind cookbook. She even gets to personalize the title and choose a cover image. Personalization is our secret sauce. It gives Nicole control of how she's going to manage her lifestyle change. Nicole was in her late 50s when she was diagnosed and cookbook industry research shows that people who are Gen X and boomers prefer cooking from a printed cookbook. So this is a great tool for her. Here's a little bit more about the living book experience. All of the recipes are designed to be quick, easy, and family friendly. We offer a variety a recipe, a recipes from a variety of cuisines so that customers can still enjoy the food they love no matter what their culture or food traditions are. The Living Book Habit Change Planner and Guide help you create the mindset and the environment so you can succeed. And we make it easy to buy groceries. Every recipe has a QR code associated with it. You scan the QR code and you get a list of ingredients that you can send to Amazon Fresh, Instacart, or Walmart Grocery so you can arrange for delivery or pickup. So with Living Book, all Nicole has to do is spend five minutes making some simple choices and she gets all the tools she needs to make her lifestyle change delivered to her home in one kit. We're really focused on servicing women who are Gen X and boomers. That's the age when you're most likely to be diagnosed or, or given a warning about a chronic condition. Our business model has two streams, B2C and B2B. 
B2C, we're offering books online through our, our website, and we hope to launch a subscription model soon. The subscription model will include four books a year, so one per season, access to a meal planning dashboard, and habit change tools you can use every day. And B2B, we license our recipes and API to healthcare organizations such as telehealth, concierge medicine, corporate wellness, and pharmaceutical. My team includes some really wonderful people, including a registered dietitian and a behavioral scientist. And we get additional support from Google for Startups Founders Academy and Irrational Labs, which is a team of behavior scientists who design systems to help change human behavior. We launched our responsive app three weeks ago and we already have a health coaching company using our recipes to coach their members to better health through better eating. And we are now looking for partners to help us, corporate partners for funding and also support doing a clinical intervention study. So I'll say you just made me super hungry from all the pictures. <laughs> Beautiful photography. So if that is a hint of what is in those books, I will be uh, signing up for that. Um, so my questions are related to, um, obviously coming from a global health service company, I'm looking at it from the lens of how you can really match um, health improvement to the modifications that people are making from a dietary standpoint with that guidance that you would have in that book. Have you been able to look at any kind of customer data yet to align in how they are improving their health? So are there whether it's blood glucose or any other measures that are going down as a result of using the living book? Not yet. Um, we started, we're starting with cardiovascular health. So all of our recipes right now support the DASH diet and meter exceed American Heart Association guidelines. Um, and we have yet to do a clinical intervention study. So that's like one of the next things on our, our roadmap to do. Okay, great. Sean, terrific. Uh, presentation, and I have to admit, I am also going to be a customer for mm -hmm. for sure. Um, how many dietary constraints do you currently cover, um, and does that impact your scaling? Like, for instance, as comorbidities increase and as different restrictions increase, like how does that impact your business model? Absolutely. So right now we are just starting with cardiovascular health. And then beyond that, um, you know, you can go and select, you know, any food allergies you have. Um, you can say, you know, I'm vegan or vegetarian. Um, you can choose a faith-based diet if you need that. Um, and then we'll, in the future, as we add more conditions, um, we'll be, you'll be able to select one or more conditions to help screen the recipes that you get. Thank you. Yeah. Sean, I love this product. Um, and let me tell you, I'm a millennial and I'm also a pen and paper type of woman. So <laughs> I'm all about the, the paper copies of cookbooks too. Um, my question is about your current kind of B2B model and clinical partnerships, because um, it sounds like you're working on building up that evidence base, but clearly you've had some success and some traction there. So could you speak to some of that partnership and like kind of the reception, I guess, that you've been getting from the clinical community? Sure. Um, one of the things that we specialize in is offering recipes for diverse, um, for diverse cuisines. Um, in our research, we found um, particularly people who were not, um, you know, were eating things other than a Eurocentric diet, um, really weren't getting the recipes that they needed. So a lot of the B2B partners that we've been talking with are really excited about the fact that we're offering um, recipes for other cuisines. Um, so we're really looking at, um, we're looking really at the Southeast right now. That's where we're located and who lives here and what do they eat. Um, and so, you know, a lot of, you know, soul food, Southern food, um, you know, Latin American, Mexican American cuisine, um, Southeast uh, Asia, Asian cuisines. Um, and so the, we have developers who develop recipes for that, but that's what um, a lot of care providers are excited about is that we're offering recipes that aren't already available through a lot of um, resources that they already use. That's awesome. I will say too, that that was another thing that stuck out for me was your culturally tailored recipes. I really, really appreciate that. So mm -hmm. great. And seasonal changes, right? So the subscription, like you can get different like holiday 
cookbooks or monthly updates um, if you want to have a whole collection, which I love exactly. too. So it keeps it fresh. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Sean. We really appreciate it. And thank you. It's, I, it's, Sean is also a wonderful example of you know, entrepreneurs who are in a field. So your, your experience at Time Make Books and Weight Watchers and, 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 you know, editing cookbooks there and now applying all of that to, um, to your own endeavor. And I just think that's a, you know, a beautiful journey and it's very inspiring. So, so thank you so much, Sean. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and you're getting some questions in the Q and A. So hop in there and, and answer away. All right. So teeing up our next company. Um, so one way to gauge a product uh, is does the founder use it themselves? Um, so what's super exciting is you're going to see a product that helps uh, make you feel good and helps with your fitness without a whole lot of work. You can still enjoy your Netflix while you're doing it. Um, and uh, I'm super excited now to introduce you to Dr. Marvin Sackner, uh, who has a diverse background in the field of medicine. He has um, served uh, as the Director of Medical Services uh, at Mount Sinai. Um, he's been the Chairman of Pulmonary Disease Subspecialty for the Examining Board of the American Board of Internal Medicine. He has um, been awarded honorary MDs as well. He holds 37 patents and has authored 249 scientific papers and four books. And he's just getting started. At 88 years old, Dr. Sackner has launched a company based on his product, The Gentle Jogger. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Sackner. Hang on, wait, uh, just one second, Dr. Sackner, we want to unmute you. Okay. Thank you, Nicole. I'm going to be talking about our product, Gentle Jogger, with our byline, Don't Sit Still. 2020, this year, we have a tale of two pandemics, physical inactivity and COVID-19. Sackner Wellness Products will address both. We're a, we started this company in 2012, and we're we're really in a research development company and we're coming close to marketing. What's the problem? We hit the treadmill regularly. You go to the gym five times a week. You get enough exercise, right? Not necessarily. We sit for hours on end in our daily routine and this pro prolonged sitting that puts us at higher risk for developing blood clots, type two diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and many other chronic diseases, fueled by insufficient physical inactivity. A major contribution to lifestyle-related diseases, such as hypertension, diabetes type two, prediabetes, obesity, coronary artery disease, heart failure, stroke, and some cancers. What's the answer? Gentle Jogger, our patented wellness device lets you sit or lie down with your feet on the motorized pedals and receive the benefits of effortless physical activity. The Gentle Jogger is a passive jogging device it adds pulses to your circulation. And with each pulse to the circulation, it releases beneficial mediators in the bloodstream. It's portable and it's a motorized machine that has a patent tapping mechanism, which duplicates the same effect that jogging has on your body. The tap of your foot releases beneficial mediators to your body. The most important one is nitric oxide, the most important molecule produced in the body with vasodilator, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-atherosclerotic effects, and was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1997. 
not the patent, but the people that discovered nitric oxide. You can use it anywhere. It moves your feet for you, so you don't, you can concentrate on whatever else you are doing. It has a built-in bumper that taps the foot against, the, against it, such as an analogous to the, the foot hitting the pavement during a run. We also have an integrated app that tracks your progress over time. We have several publications since we've got from prototypes that we've used since 2018. It, it improves short-term short heart rate variability. It, it reduces blood pressure that uh, increases when you sit for prolonged periods of time. Uh, it also helps in managing opioid, opioid use disorder. It improves diabetes type 2 glycemic indices in both type 2 diabetes and also in people living at home uh, that use it. Uh, it produces many, said many of benefits, including a, a emerging uh, application for COVID-19. Uh, COVID-19 and really started in the U.S. in February 2020. There's no current treatment. The vaccine is years away, if ever, and it's projected to be 100,000 U.S. cases this month by Dr. Fauci. How does a general jogger do it? We repurposed it, the idea. We have pulses are added to the circulation, as Dr. Adams pointed out, so that it massages the inner lining of blood vessels called the endothelium to increase nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is known to inhibit coronary vi virus replication. So the question is, can we deliver the nitric oxide through the bloodstream to, to accomplish it? We haven't done it yet, but we believe other, other research that we have will do it. it the, the technology enhances host defense. It also increases uh, TPA, which is the clot buster, to protect against coagul coagulopathy produced by COVID-19. And we think that Gentle Jogger will serve as a backstop to COVID-19. And we have submitted a proposal to SBIR to make it ensure that we can continue to get information on this use. Our device currently is aligned with FDA requirements for wellness devices, allowing for a fast route to market. We have it have functioning prototypes in circulation for two years and used successfully in trials on over 100 users have all indicated that the gentle jogger provides improvement in their daily lives. Design has been done according to strict quality control standards. Engineering files are available in solid works, thus allowing for fast track manufacturing. We are not a manufacturing company, but we are dealing with one right now. Uh, future modifications and improvements can be made to enhance the user experience. We have an app, app and want to improve that as well for multi-user and institutional usage. So visit our site, www.gentlejogger.com for more information. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sackner. I'm loving that. Uh, so how, how long do you use it uh, yourself? How long I, do you use it? Twice a day, and I go by steps. So I do between 10,000 steps in place to about 15,000 steps in place. I have been doing this with other, device, with other predicate devices uh, since uh, uh, for about 20 years. Okay. I do it every day. It's, it's, it's no problem because I can watch television in the morning and watch the show at night. Yeah, my Dr. Sackner, Dr. this is an amazing product. I was just thinking, you know, a coworker of mine uh, back in the office that we're no longer working in has one of those ones where you pedal under the desk to keep your blood flow and mobility during the day because we're just sitting at our desk all day. And I was thinking, that person needs a gentle jogger. Um, <laughs> but my question for you is actually, more on like the, the product development and the design. I'm just really curious about what went into 
developing something like the gentle jogger um you're obviously an older adult yourself so you could design from kind of like personal experience and need but you also talk a little bit about user testing and how that fit into the product development let me backtrack and say that it's not like you're pedaling under the desk you're doing nothing it's completely effortless it's all motorized so the pedals move with the motor and you're and it's tapping against the bumper but it's effortless so it's totally different than any other device that causes you to do something and therefore makes you multitask. We're not multitasking here, so we can do anything we want. Uh, we started with a wooden, a wooden frame device, and we went to a, 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 a bed-like device, and these are all predicates that we sold, and they were unsuccessful, really, in terms of marketing, because they're too expensive, too heavy. The, the, the XRS, which was the predicate immediately before this, uh, weighed about 450 pounds, so it's not part of portable. This device weighs 14 pounds, so you can carry it around, take it on a plane, do anything you want with it. We've actually used it on a train, no problem at all. Very cool, thank you. Dr. Sackner, this is amazing. Thank you. Um, I have to admit, this is not me asking. There's a lot of audience members that are asking this. Mm -hmm. um, but before I ask the audience question, you mentioned that you're FDA compliant. Are you going to go through trials for reimbursement codes or are you going to go direct to customers? And if it's the latter, the audience question is, what's the price point? Yeah, we'll tell you all that. First of all, the price point on this project, because we, this is, we've only had prototypes, is between $600 and $900. One year warranty with an app, with the app, which I didn't show you. Uh, we, would, we do not have to go through the FDA because this is a low risk wellness device. So we're gonna sell directly to the consumer. But once we do COVID, we will need a clinical trial. Mm -hmm. We have to have a, we we'll probably do a de novo application with FDA, but we're not there yet. Thank you. So um, really innovative product and I just, um absolutely admire your ability to stay with it. I know it's been um, 2012 and for you to just continue to innovate is really impressive. Um, so when we think about the target audience of this, I know that it, you know, it could be, yes, it could apply to everyone, but in terms of zeroing in on who you really want to pick up this product and be able to you know, look back and say, yes, this group understands what the value proposition is and has um, taken into it. Is it the aging population um, in terms of th that's, that's it? Or do you see um, others that will kind of trump that? Well, you, you were right the first time, so was everybody. However, uh, we, we, we did bring it to some trade meetings and it was very universally successful from the son or daughter of an old elderly patient. I said, we don't need it, but my father or my, or my mother needs it. So it'll probably be targeted to either uh, convalescent homes, to elderly people, but elderly people don't really buy things like this. It'll be, it'll be their, their, their kids that will buy it for them. So but we have, everybody wants one of these, once they get on it. I, I didn't mention one thing that's important. When you stop immediately, you get this pleasurable feeling of tingling mm -hmm. in lower extremities, because the nitric oxide is dilating mm -hmm. the arteries. So in, in contrast to a lot of other exercise machines that don't do anything, you say, well, it's, it's good for you, we should do it. Here you can, I would say about 95% of people that we've had on it will get this feeling. It can last seconds, it can last minutes. And so it's a good feeling, tingling. Well, let's, let's end on a good feeling of tingling. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sackner and uh, to your whole team, this is really extraordinary. Um, so we had originally scheduled a little break at this point. Um, we are running a little long because we wanted to give each of the uh, teams ample time to answer the questions from the judges. So um, if you need to take a little bio break, by all means, go right ahead. But we're gonna, we're gonna um, carry forward with our next company. Um, so clearly, uh, we are all talking about mental well-being, uh, not only at the national level, but globally. Um, and it's, it's actually healthy. I think that we are all kind of owning our anxiety and stress that, that uh, we're all feeling during this time. Uh, but, you know, there was a big mental health crisis before the pandemic. 
And we are so pleased and honored to introduce a team to you um, who's been really tackling it head on. Um, first uh, with direct care, but also a really creative and awesome business model um, that ensures that the social workers and the clients are both uh, equally cared for, if you will. So it is my pleasure to uh, introduce Susan Morozovich, the CEO and founder of Telebehavioral Health. Welcome, Susan. Susan, make sure Thank that you. you're, there you, yeah, there you are. Okay, good. Hi, Thank darling. you. Hi, first of all, it's an honor to be here today. Thank you so much for allowing us to present. Uh, my name is Susie and I am the founder of Telebehavioral Health US. Um, so as Danielle was saying, I don't know how to switch this in the, there we go. Um, in America, mental illness is the leading source of disease burden, and we have a serious mental health provider shortage crisis going on. Congress has referred to it as a workforce crisis. It's been going on since way before the pandemic. One of the reasons for the shortage is related to social workers and our role in, in behavioral health care. We make up a large majority of behavioral health care workers. 80% of social workers are female, and the high educational requirements with the low wages and inflexible and demanding workloads are a driver of this shortage. Um, oops. So I started Telebehavioral Health US in, in 2016 in order to address the provider shortage um, through in order to not only increase access to treatment for the 40 million American years who are in need of it and don't have access to it. Real quick, I want to flip back because I didn't touch on this, but anything you see in a dark blue area here is a mental health provider shortage area. Anything that's a, a medium gray is, is a partial shortage area. Anything that's a light blue is a non-shortage area. So we have to have most major metropolitan areas. The majority of the United States is made up by these shortage areas. So the reason why I started Telebehavioral Health in 2016 was I felt that by saving using the, the savings that's created by this very green business model and it gets rid of all brick and mortar services um, we can take that savings and we can pass it on to the workforce by increasing their wages uh, we also can increase access to services by doing that um, to the 40 million Americans a year who are in need of treatment but don't receive it um, so some of the services that we offer right now, since the pandemic, we've seen an increased need for seniors and caregivers and family services. So some of the things that we're focusing on are on this slide. We have um, EAP uh, group contracts that all involve now caregiver supports. We can provide individual and family therapy. We do peer coaching with seniors, medication and wellness, psychoeducational services. We have a large continuum of care that we can deliver online to services or to seniors. Um, the business model is based on, on the fact that we, we provide um, the needs of our clinicians and by, by doing that, we, it helps them to help take care of the needs of our clients. Again, the cost saving leads, leads to a wage increase that's almost twice as much. The average clinician working with us is going to make almost twice as much as that same position in a brick and mortar setting. However, she's also going to be able to have a lot more flexibility in work from home. And for a female dominated profession, that's extremely important. So, some what makes us different from some other and i'm going to we say online we air quote therapy market is because a lot of these platform-based companies that we're familiar with um one of the things they can't be is in network with medicare and medicaid almost all of these companies have disclaimers saying that it's not really therapy there's a whole continuum of things that they do different from us but some of the most important ones we want to focus on are not accepting medicare not accepting medicaid cherry picking what we would call the worried well um, they cut off services for people that might have a interactive complexity or have a greater medical need, difficulty with getting online and, and communicating. And they also don't allow for integration of care, which is a huge part of healthcare delivery. In 10 years of having many of these companies around, we have seen absolutely no impact on that disease burden. So what makes us, us different is that we're able to actually call what we're doing therapy by definition. Um, so we have right now an established foundation with 
uh, I would say 20 different payers in five different states. We, our business model is what I would call the path of least resistance. Being in healthcare, healthcare often faces a, a pay gap between when you deliver the service and when you receive reimbursement for it. And so um, what we've done with our path of least resistance is overcome some of those barriers to reimbursement. So getting quicker credentialing, being a preferred provider with some of our payers, we've established Medicare contracts with four max in over 20 states, and we use a nationally supported direct to patient care model. Oops. Uh, populations that we help, we, we help a, a whole continuum of kind of special populations that have higher need and focusing right now on seniors and caregivers beyond our EAP contracts and the fact that we're in network with Medicare and what we can offer um, uh, these populations are programs like the one we just piloted in Northern California called Art for the Young at Heart. It's a clinically supported art class for seniors. It's facilitated by two senior peers. One of them is a licensed clinical social worker. The other one is an artist. And we actually made, made the paper in Northern California there. So we're really excited. We were able to um, collaborate with uh, the um, Arts Council. We got all the seniors' tablets, which also helps them to, they get to keep them, to stay online and engage after the art class is over. Our five-year projections right now are based on um, our average session reimbursement, which when you combine our three main payers that we're using for our path of least resistance, it's just $89 a session, which again would make that annual revenue for that clinician significantly higher than a social worker in, in the field um, elsewhere. We are asking for, ask is $250,000 in order for us to kind of bridge that payment gap um, and also expand increasing services for seniors and caregivers. Uh, this is our, our, our founders are myself, Steve Rotary and Corey Hart. I also put on here a bunch of our clinicians. Um, in January, I just started onboarding people after doing this on my own for four years. And already we have six clinicians who are thinking like founders. So what I mean by that is they, they're leaving their jobs, they're coming over to us fully and um, taking on other roles in the organization because they see what we're trying to do, they believe in it, and they see it as a path to a better way of, of addressing that disease burden. Um, and that is, that is who we are. Thank you, Susan. This was an excellent con uh, presentation, and I have to admit, like, I'm so passionate about this, and there was so much to unpack so on much. your presentation, and so I have a million questions. Mm -hmm. uh, but given time limits, uh, so you had mentioned some of your different competitors, and Able to is is one of them. Given that there is um, such a shortage of social workers and psychiatrists and psychologists. How are you competing for them relative to the competitors? So what's your value proposition just to make sure that you can recruit easier? Um, so, well, well, we offer a whole different host of things that the platform companies can't, platform-based companies can't offer. One, we don't make them sign a contract saying what they're doing isn't really therapy. We allow them to integrate care. We support them in their own business. They're all 1099 and we take care of all their um, clinical support needs, their credentialing, licensing, or not licensing, um, credentialing to get in network with their payers, billing, we make sure that they get paid. We also offer what's different and able to actually used to do more of this since they made the switch over to the platform based model. We offer clinical support and supervision. So we offer instead of just being a platform, we want to give providers and clients the experience of going to an in person environment. So they know each other, they network with each other, they create programs with each other. Um, we're doing professional development with them a lot differently, and I could, it would take me a long time to explain, but mm -hmm. our professional development is helping them to develop as professionals and business owners. And so, um, uh, does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. We, it's, it's more than a branded turnkey office suite. Like you are um, someone to us and, and we know you and, and we meet for clinical rounds. A lot of the platform based companies do no oversight, which is horrific if you think about it. Um, we also don't have the bare minimum of only licensed and credentialed. We all of our clinicians have at least four years post licensing experience, have extensive training and evidence based practice and can take that training to create more models like a DBT program online. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Susan, thank you for presenting on this topic and uh, COVID has really uh, shined a, shown a light, mm -hmm. I think, on mm -hmm. just how badly 
um, our country has behavioral health needs and, and how exacerbated they are. Um, I'm just curious in terms of, you know, the technological aspect of your platform offering. Can you elaborate a little bit more on like the tele aspect of the telebehavioral health service and then how you have thought about, you know, those competencies as it relates to an older adult market? Yep. So with our, so real quick, another thing that separates us is when we work with our older adults, we utilize um, senior peer supports and caregiver supports to help them get online and get the technology. So we partner with nursing homes and in communities where, where we have an identified peer. Um, so we can offer that in-person assistance when, when needed. We also had an issue come up recently where one of our peers noticed that no one in one of our nursing homes was wearing PPE. They were having the seniors were, were the PPE and not the staff. And so we were able to address that by filing a complaint. It was really concerning, um, which we wouldn't have been able to do if, had we been online. So um, the we actually don't, we're not a platform at all. We are an organization and we use a few different platforms um, outside of a remote work desktop. So we use an EMR, that's Therapy Notes. VC is our um, uh, video communications platform. And then everything else is handled um, as though it would be uh, an in-person organization. We would like to create a platform someday, but right now, unlike the other or other companies, the platform is not our focus. It's the service provision. And with that, I, I must say thank you, Susan. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance. Uh, we, we are running a little on time. And, uh, and Susan is a huge advocate as well in the industry for um, you know, helping to create better policy, to get more access to services and so forth. So, um, so we look forward to uh, asking you more questions in the Rima room afterwards. Thank um, you. So we do need to move on. I apologize. We're running um, short on time. So uh, let it, let's, let's tee up our next company. Um, so we heard from Dr. Sackner the importance of walking or the, the ability to walk. And I don't know about you guys, but I've been you know, outside on the front lawn, like seeing all my neighbors kind of come out of their houses and families walking together and it's been beautiful. Um, but what about all the folks who can't walk, uh, who don't have a buddy to walk with? Um, how do you, how do you, you know, help them get out? Um, so I'd love to introduce uh, Victor Rodriguez, the CEO and founder of Wabu. Thank Victor, you so much away. for the opportunity, Danielle, for the introduction. All right, the screen share. All right, so again, thank you guys so much for this opportunity. My name is Victor Rodriguez. I'm the CEO and founder of Wabu, a mobile app that helps people walk together to solve social isolation. In very basic terms, social isolation leads to chronic loneliness. Chronic loneliness makes seniors less likely to take their meds, to have a healthy diet, or to seek preventive care. If we were to quantify the effects of isolation, it would cause as much harm as smoking 15 cigarettes per day. It actually leads to a higher risk of stroke, early mortality, and a serious lack of exercise. Walking is important because it's the most accessible tool we have to be both physically and socially active within our communities. In terms of COVID-19, it's also the safest and most efficient way to boost our immune system. When we started doing market research, we met with all these vivid, passionate community members, and they said that with time, their walking buddies passed away. And since then, they have been inactive because they didn't have means to connect with others in their communities. The truth is that with age, it becomes just harder and harder to make friends. For example, in senior centers, most of them close in the early part of the afternoon. So the members end up staying at home for the larger part of the day isolated. Even since COVID started, most of these venues have been permanently closed. But social isolation is not limited to seniors. We've also identified a large group of adults, mainly women, who are caring members about the communities and passionate walkers. They currently use alternatives like Facebook groups and walking meetup, um, walking meetup groups to be able to find a walking buddy. But those have also been inactive since COVID started. How Wobbly works, you have your map view, you request a walk, and others in your private community network will receive your walking details to join you. First, you can choose to be someone else's walking buddy or to request your own walk. If you choose the latter, start with your walking start location. Type in your destination or duration of walk, a brief description, and schedule it on demand or in advance. 
then folks in your private community network will receive your walk-in details. Note that to, be, to engage in a private community network, you must have that specific community's PIN access code. That means that Wobble is also a familiar and safe platform. Those who join, Wobble automatically creates a group chat where you can arrange the meetup prior to the walk. Our competitors are Meetup, Papapal, and Wider Circle. These usually rely on a local coordinator or organization to schedule the walks on a weekly or two week basis. The key differentiator is that Wobble actually empowers individuals to be able to walk at any given point in time and find a walking buddy. Furthermore, Wobble offers the flexibility of having different walking buddies for different purposes. And my personal favorite, Wobble rewards walking buddy behavior. Those are community members that have the highest frequency rate of accepting other people's walk requests, so being a walking buddy. Our revenue model, the first year is very straightforward, walking subscriptions, similar to Meetup. The second tier, every time that we spoke to local officials, they said that they said, Victor, we cannot find a tool that is both scalable and can measure walking performance in community aggregate. What was perfectly suited to be a solution to this problem. There's, all, there's also the corporate wellness programs, especially now in the work from home era, and lastly and most importantly, reimbursement, reimbursements through Medicare Advantage plans. The added cost of social isolation per patient per month to Medicare Advantage plans is over $134. We are confident that with a high use and strong use of Wabu, we, we will be able to decrease this number and take a percentage from those savings. Our growth strategy, we have partnerships currently with the Maryland Department of Health to start testing Wabu in August. They have over 15,000 active walking groups in the state that they manage. Then we will release to all Marylanders in October during the Maryland um, Department of Transportation Annual Walking Summit. And then lastly, we're in deep negotiations with Howard County to release Wabu across all their senior centers. Our team includes our tech partners, Brooming7. They are an amazing team on Dev Shop based in New York City. We've been working together since November. And the next steps, we need help and introductions to potential community partners to test Wabu. We need traction and ultimately funding opportunities as well. If you would like to join Wabu and check the app, Please use pin 1001 um, for the Boston area. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Victor. Yeah, Victor, first of all, I love the ending slide. That's just such a vibrant, joyful photo of those three older adults oh, there. That's so great. <laughs> um, I love what you're doing. I'm a big fan of some of these different kind of like walking matchmaking platforms that I've been seeing pop up over the last few years. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how you're different from say your competitor over in LA. I know people walk are pretty well, um, but how are you different from some of the other kind of walking buddy matchmaking apps? Well, there's three, there's three layers to Wobble. First, Wobble is one of the few that is singly focused on walking. Second, there's only one feature on the application, which is requesting a walk. So everybody who's there has the same community need, basically. And furthermore, it's very familiar and well, and folks feel very comfortable with Wobble because everybody who's there is from their same community. So while you might not know other persons, you know that they have the same need as you and they are from the same locality. Great, thank you. So thanks, Victor. I have a question um, related to the lens of a caregiver. So um, if you think about how Hydrate was able to kind of give data back to um, those that care for loved ones in terms of how much they were drinking water, curious if you have any other um, similar mechanisms where you know I could get a report back that my um, loved one took a walk and um, took those steps so that they're kind of getting a, a reassurance of that activity. So that is actually a great question. We currently don't have any mechanisms, although they are in the product roadmap. What we plan to do is that within your private community network, you have a specific list of friends. That can be, for example, your caregiver, your family, et cetera. Then you have the, your walking data that is shown publicly within all those friends. So you can compare how many walks have you been taking weekly, what is the distance or steps, and with what frequency. And ultimately offer rewards based on a weekly basis on walking performance improvement. Great, thank you. Thank you, Victor. Um, 
As you're building out this business and doing your partnerships, what has been the hardest thing for you right now as you're trying to grow? Um, amen. That's a good question too. Um, distribution. It's very hard. Um, our original plan through distribution was to go to senior centers, um, Medicare Advantage member clubs, and other similar venues. And these have all been closed since COVID started. So now people are home. They're not really paying attention to technology and it's very hard to reach. So the direct to consumer now we are strongly relying on this sort of pivot because of COVID-19 on community partnerships. We need a community partner that commits to testing Wobble, and we provide all the support, but they must commit that their folks, their members are gonna, you know, at least try out Wobble. And that is sort of the biggest challenge that we have today, the distribution. Because the, the other side of the cone is that we open Wobble and there are no community, private community networks, for example, but then the safety factor comes in. And Wobble will not work if safety is not the number one priority, both in terms of social distancing, wearing masks, but also just general safety. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Victor. We really appreciate it. And indeed, we got to get more people out there walking and, um, and, and building relationships with each other. So it, it has so many additional benefits as well. And at the community level, um, I know walkability scores really matter to mayors and, and local officials. So I think you're really onto something that could change communities and, uh, and health outcomes. Hopefully, we're all rowing to the same side here. So thank you so much, guys, for your feedback and questions. Indeed, thank you. Okay, so um, for uh, small things that make a big difference, um, we're excited to introduce you to our next speaker who has spent many years in the fashion industry and uh, was really inspired to help people dress with dignity. So please join me in welcoming Gina Adams from Wearology. Gina, it's all yours. Hello. Uh, I'd like you to take a minute and picture your favorite button-up shirt. The one that is your go-to that kind of makes you feel confident and it might spark a memory. Well, now imagine as we get older with so many different illnesses, dexterity limitations become a common symptom. And so simple activities that we take for granted, like unscrewing a cap or um, pinching a piece of jewelry to put on or buttoning that favorite shirt become challenging. And in fact, one out of six people cannot dress independently. And we all know somebody. For me, you know, I was witnessing the impact of Parkinson's on my dad that really inspired a solution. It's not only the physical impact, but of course the emotional impact. But what if we could take one activity like getting dressed and make it effortless? Like this. Hi, I'm Gina Adams, the founder of Wearology. We design innovative hardware to restore independence and really empower people to look and feel their best. I've been in the apparel industry for 20 years and I was surprised how often adaptive specific products look like they come out of a rehab site, right? So we've de developed a pipeline of products to restore essential activities of daily living. Now, so Gina, can yeah. I just pause for a second? Could you please share your screen? Oh my gosh, it's not being that's, shared. Ah, no, hold on. Okay. Oh but, no. Uh, but that was Thank a very dramatic you. opening. <laughs> Thank you. Because I do want, oh my goodness. Thanks for jumping in there. Um, can you see me now? We can. So let's get to uh, your PowerPoint. Can you see the PowerPoint now? Nope. Uh, there we go. Okay. Thank you. So I do want to put it in, put it in, uh, in execution mode, in play mode. Um, it is, oh goodness, I, actually, it's fine if you want to, uh, just do it in I presentation. Sure maybe the problem is, I'm sorry, let me back up. Um, That's okay. I didn't mean to ruin I'm your jam. Sharing. Yeah. I'm sharing. I just want to make sure I'm sharing the correct screen. Okay. Here we go. We got it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Put it in presentation Thank mode you. and you're on your way. 
We'll okay. restart the clock. <laughs> Go for it. That again. You're doing so, great. You're doing awesome. Um, so the idea is with 30 million people faced with dexterity challenges, why not create magnetic button adapters to help people restore their own unique individual style? We, we have an amazing value proposition of restored independence as well as time and of course the ability to retrofit your favorite shirt in your wardrobe that you've accumulated over a lifetime so that you can express your own unique style as well as um, eliminate that dependency on your caregiver to provide dignity. You simply attach one part to the button, the other to the button hole, and they're sold in sets of 10. So now this is a no-sew machine washable solution that you can transfer to other shirts for seasonal appropriateness. There's really no competition. What's out there are either not machine washable, they're not affordable, or they're just not functional. And as I mentioned, there's a ripple effect on people like my mom as a caregiver. Over 50 million people go through this transition from being a partner and a spouse and a lover to that of a caregiver, which is a remarkably different role and impacts you, of course, both my body, mind, and spirit. In 2019, the global adaptive clothing, shoe, and accessory market was $288 billion. We are targeting our beachhead at the 1.6 million annual new cases because we know people, if they're facing something like a stroke, they're actively seeking solutions to overcome these new challenges. The great news is popular brands have recently entered these adaptive clothing spaces, paving the way to consumer awareness. So now people are actively seeking our solutions and they're great distribution partners. We have incredible milestones. We launched in 2019 and have acquired our first 500 customers. We've established our B2C market on Amazon and our own e-commerce platform. And we've got validation for our magnetic buttons with occupational therapists who see the full gamut of disabilities across major rehab sites in the nation. Now we're positioned to grow. And knowing that 10,000 people reach retirement every day, these are individuals that take pride in their appearance as well as their independence. And through product diversification and global expansion and great margins, we are positioned to scale. Of course, we're going to do this through our amazing, talented team of professionals who've been um, also have personal investment and I myself went back acquired my MBA just so that I could run this company. James Murtha, our chief innovation officer, lives independently with paraplegia and really has been an inspiration for our product development. Complemented by our expert advisors and our strategic partners, we are positioned for success. And so today we have already raised over six figures and we're looking for enterprise partners as well as our investors so that we can begin helping millions of people feel as well as look their best. Go to our website now and tag us at buttons to button. Thank you. <laughs> Yay, thank you. And, and thank you, Gina. If that was a quick recovery. So entrepreneurship, right? That. You got to be able to, <laughs> to hey. recover and you did it. So check marks on that one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank That's you. All right. No worries. <laughs> She's not my friend, but thanks. That's all right. All right, judges. Yes, Thank no, it was an excellent presentation, Gina. Thank you. Um, and very exciting product for sure. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how you're finding your customers? and a little bit more around your go-to-market strategy? Of course. Um, we have really um, been, um, I should say, fortunate to um, launch a crowdfund campaign last 
June. And so through that, we were able to hit some major milestones with um, features uh, through Good Morning America, as well as local television. And then that really spearheaded our social media campaign, which through this organic um, opportunities since COVID-19 hit, we've been interviewing professionals that have disabilities so that we can acquire a lot of the demonstration and testimonials from people and then tag on to their following. So we've already reached over 87,000 people. And like I said, looking at the spinal cord injured clientele as well as um, the stroke and partnering with these kind of foundations, such as the Parkinson's Foundation, the Christopher Reeve Foundation, as well as the um, cerebral palsy. Great, thank you. So, um, so excellent product, um, and I definitely see wonderful use case. And I think there's so much about the dignity part of it that you're not swapping out some wardrobe that now fits your life. Um, and I appreciate that you um, are keeping their emotional wellness in mind. Um, so you mentioned about the occupational therapists. Obviously, they're at ground zero of um, you know helping someone learn these new um, techniques um, as they're dealing with um, any kind of recovery. Have you thought about them or are they already part of the mix of being a channel of distribution so that they're essentially um, refers for the product? Exactly. We have sent out samples and shirts to some major rehab sites throughout the nation and kind of targeting um, the larger hospital chains like Trinity and Ascension Health. So that because we know occupational therapists are the most caring individuals and they share information. Right. And so um, with those testimonials, we've been able to partner with some of their online platforms as well. And I want to make sure I'm answering your question in terms of their, what we've found is that they're influencers. And so we've sent out cards. Um, we have um, little cards with our information. And so they can pass those out to theirs. And I've seen um, obviously an uptake locally where we're in like the rehab center of Michigan, as well as Beaumont Hospital. And that you know, I can tell by our orders where we're sending our cards. So that's been exciting. And now we're starting to do kind of a fundraiser, like a pay it forward. So we'll, we're giving back $5 to the donation using a coupon code so we can track which foundations are the most um, successful as well that's as, um, yeah, I think that we're, trying it's like covid was definitely a challenge for us because of the loss of opportunity going to the largest occupational trade show in boston um, this past march so we've been just on the phone and sending out emails that way but yeah um i think by getting mm -hmm. a foothold in the hospitals that we can kind of ward off our incumbents as well so it is patent pending i should mention that so yeah Right. Uh, so Gina, thank you so much. And indeed, I, so much has been impacted with our general way of doing business. And so that's why we so appreciate everybody. Um, we've had like 100 people watching today. And um, so uh, by all means, for any listeners, uh, reach out to any one of the startup founders that, that you've heard today and help them on their journey, help make a connection, you know, get a sample of the product, be a, you know, amplify it on your own channels. Um, so Gina, thank you so much. And hopefully we will see you in Boston at the next Abilities Expo the next time we all get together. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, all right, so thank you. Um, all right, so um, hold on, because we've got our last uh, uh, founder. Um, and I love, I love all the stories. And I love this one too, because clearly uh, being safe at home has taken on extraordinary new meaning uh, during the pandemic. Uh, but what does it mean if you, uh, have a, a disability or you live in, you know, with a wheelchair or other uh, medical devices that makes it hard to live in your own home or, or that of your kids and, and so forth. And so uh, our next company has answered that, cha that challenge. Um, they're architects who are called to this work um, to help their, their nephew who, who unfortunately was injured. Uh, please welcome Julie Leinberger, the CEO and founder of Willpad. Take it away, Julie. Thank you. I'm going to try to share my screen right now. And here we go. Oh, you got me on there. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening here. 
I said I was sharing my screen. And uh, share, just click on your, uh, where your PowerPoint is open. Do you have your PowerPoint open? Yeah. Okay, there we go. There it is. Okay, go to the first, the first screen in your PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. There you go. There you go. All right, you're nope. on. Now, technologically savvy. Wilk Had offers a beautiful livable space for people with mobility issues to live with their family in their beloved home. It's a 200 square foot accessible bedroom and bathroom that can be attached to an existing home, typically within a week. It's affordable, eco-friendly, and non-toxic. Wheelpad keeps families together, such as the Everinghams, who on March 14th, Vermont did COVID -like lockdown. Two days later, I got a frantic call from a daughter saying her, her father was stuck in a COVID-infected nursing home. We found out that we didn't need a permit to put, to put Wheelpad in her particular house. Um, dad was out of the nurse, oops, I'm sorry, advancing. Dad um, moved out of the nursing home into their family room. We signed the lease. By the April 4th, we, de we delivered wheel pad. Dad moved in less than one month from the initial phone call. But we'll let you hear. This is, this is so exciting. This is going to be a huge uh, opportunity for Dad. And beautiful. Love it. Well, thank you for designing this wheel pad as well as helping us to put it together. It's been a pleasure. It's really, I'm really glad you're able to be back home. Yeah. I'm really, uh, yeah. looking forward to it, really. Thank you. Now we'll take a tour of the wheel pad. Every wheel pad has a hoist track for ease of travel from bedroom to the bathroom. Our track is compatible with almost with any lift system of your choosing. Each wheel pad has an ADA um, actually exceeds ADA standards with features such as a roll-in European style shower, PVC free safety flooring provides slip resistance, and there's ample space for an aid if washing assistance is needed. This is an example of an attached wheel pad showing the accessible entry that's not only for the resident, but also for caregivers. Wheel pad attaches to any existing home, is raised or excavated to the level of the house to allow for uninterrupted transition, and the connector, which you see here, can be any size, typically five foot by five foot. <clears throat> the interior is customized to provide seamless transition to roll in for dinner or other family activities. Walls, flooring, and ceiling finishes are specified by the family to match the existing house. The large sliding glass door allows for a separate accessible entry. Caregivers don't need to disrupt everyone in the house. We have three models of wheel pad. Three days ago, this particular Norwich model was delivered on Co to Cotuit on Cape Cod. Beth and Ken kept Beth's mother out of a nursing home by bringing a hospital bed into their living room. Yesterday, I received a message. We love it, we love it, we love it. Mom's so excited to use an adult toilet and our marriage is saved. The couple plans to move their wheel pad to land in Vermont for their own future retirement. The prototype for XL was built for a Vietnam veteran with ALS who wanted a larger model to accommodate a queen size bed. I'm losing my legs, he said. I still want to sleep next to my wife. Edmund stayed home with his family until he passed. His wife chose to keep wheel pad. She says, this is where I feel closest to Edmund. Trio is a three different wheel pads together, and this one is for accessible faculty housing at a private school. Another is in the works for a family to house the wife's mother, husband's father, and a caregiver. We're working with a senior community in Arizona for a third as well, and a nursing facility about to renovate their complex has requested a quint. Our business model is um, Norwich is available for both lease or purchase. XL trios and quints are available for purchase, financing through home equity lines of credit. Um, credit unions have financed a number of them, and worker compensation units, the extreme cases, have uh, covered the entire cost. We need health insurance companies to come on board. Our first Veterans Administration Specially Adapted Housing Grant was shepherded through by Senator Bernie Sanders. Since 2018, Wheelpad, Wheelpad has been official VA contractor, enabling us to scale in every state. Purchasing Wheelpad and using nursing coverage, families save an average of 2,500 as opposed to a nursing home. The family also maintains equity and it's, it's more fun. <laughs> 
With WheelPad, transition can be less than a month from the initial call. A family can easily live in their home rather than temporarily, temporary housing during an insulation, which is sometimes necessary. We need advocacy in these four areas, marketing a new concept and payment strategies, permitting. Not only does each state have their own regulations, but each tiny town, permitting can take anywhere from one phone call to many months. Workers' compensation major case units cover WheelPad, but we need health insurance companies to get them on board. WheelPad's a L3C, a low profit limited liability company, which is a hybrid between a nonprofit and a for profit. Foundations are allowed to give grants for program related investments, such as providing WheelPad for someone in their program. We need a test case with a foundation for this pass through. Thanks to numerous requests, our design for a standalone accessible tiny house will be available this fall. We are also starting to interview builders on the West Coast to drive our econ economics in that region. Excitement for Will Pat is building with media recognition and awards. I was given the inaugural Socialpreneur Award from Women's Day Magazine. Our TEDx origin story has been viewed over 44,000 times. Nursing homes are calling us to use wheel pads as they renovate. Our business model is expanding. We are solving a crucial pro problem, keeping families together, reuniting families. Wheel pad preserves a loved one's dignity, autonomy, and it's the coolest room in the house. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you so much, Julie. I love that it's the coolest room in the house. <laughs> so judges wow wheelpad is just so innovative i just it really is taking that that initial idea that you think how could they ever make this happen and you are bringing it to life so i just i'm so impressed with the social connection part of it too like obviously it's a physical um space but what you're doing for families is unbelievable um, so thank you for that. Um, my question is related to how you're getting this word out. So of course it's the, um, you know, it's, it's me, it's the caregiver, the probably the loved ones that are saying, I want to bring mom and dad home, but I can't possibly add on, or it's going to take forever to remodel my home. How are you getting to them now? Right now? Well, through the TEDx that we did, that's been amazing. We've been on tiny, tinyhouse.net podcast, which it was all over the country. We are, um, we speak, I give presentations at different spinal cord injury centers. And um, we, I keep trying to get articles. We've had a lot of media coverage. We're trying to get more. Um, one of my goals, of course, is AARP, <laughs> uh, especially since now that we've had three people that, as they say, have been rescued from nursing homes. Uh, we've also done for people with cerebral palsy, for uh, many spinal cord injuries and Vietnam veterans or other. Uh, we also market through uh, veterans organization for uh, injured, injured service members. Julie, thank you for this amazing presentation. I similarly am also incredibly emotional thinking about what it took to come up with this idea and innovate on this, um, and then the impact it's going to have on individuals and families. Um, I think it's tremendous. Can you tell us, and, and the amount of marketing and word of mouth that you've been able to get out is also quite, quite impressive. Can you talk to us a little bit more about like how many units you've been able to sell and, you know, especially with COVID, like what some of the biggest barriers for you to scale right now are? Well, the barriers to scale are the four that I mentioned, but we sold out with COVID. <laughs> so we are in production right now. Again, we have, we have placed nine wheel pads and we are, have three more on their way. One of them is already spoken for. When we do the uh, accessible tiny house right now, the minute we get it um, pricing, it's at the manufacturers now for pricing. We have five people who say, let me know the price and when it's available, let me be your first order. So I don't know who will actually get to be the first order. But I also wanted to address what you said at the beginning, as well as, um, I think your name is Sarah, uh, that we, we cry almost every day when people tell us their I mean, it's, it's 
it's absolutely the most heartwarming business to be in to just keep families together and bring people home in an affordable way. Thank you. And thank you for all the work oh that you're gosh. doing. Thank you. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Julie. And thank you, everybody. Um, that was a beautiful moment um, for us to bring this part of the Pitch Fest to a close. Um, so judges, please uh, go off to your Zoom room. And um, I, uh, I wanna thank everybody who has been so active in, uh, in the chat and, and has been uh, sending some great um, questions to our speakers. As soon as we uh, wrap up the, um, this part of the, 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 the pitch fest, uh, they will all be going to the Remo room. So if the Venture, Fa Venture Cafe team could please put the URL um, in the chat uh, for uh, the next um, virtual networking space where you'll get a chance to meet with each of the companies after they take a few minutes to get over there. Um, so if the Venture Cafe team can do that, that would be awesome. Thank you. Um, and um, I would like to welcome back uh, Jacqueline. So Jacqueline, what do you think? She's hopping. She's hopping on. <laughs> um, so, uh, so we saw we saw prod. Oh, there you are, my dear. Oh, wait, got to get your uh, mute. I'm off. here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. You know, it's always great to see um, interesting approaches to age-old challenges that so many of us face, and um, so many of our loved ones face. Um, everything from cookbooks to mobility, um, it was to hydration, right? It was great to see um, a, a diverse set of solutions um, from some really forward thinking uh, entrepreneurs. So thank you. Thank you for, um, for you know, finding the, the, some of the best and brightest startups. It was, was great to, to listen to their pitches. Wonderful, thank you. And, um, and so I, I think it would be also helpful for the audience to understand like, how does AARP work with startups? You're such a large organization, 38 million members. Um, kind of what, what happens now? And, and clearly we'll announce kind of like the top winner here, but, but all the startups um, that are interesting to you, what is, what is kind of a, a partnership or a collaborate, I shouldn't say partnership, but collaboration journey with yep. AARP? Absolutely, thanks for asking that. So our um, uh, journey, our tra trajectory with startups, it has a couple of different options, right? Which is, which is important for us because startups come to us in um, an array of different shapes, forms, and fashions, right? And depending on what startup you are or what you're focused on, your need is, is, is different. Um, all of our engagements, um, regardless of if we discovered a startup through an accelerator relationship or through a pitch competition, there's, you know, a, a small set of time where we're really getting a chance to know each other. And the reason why um, that's important for us, and I'll impress upon any startup that's listening as well, the reason why that should be important for you is because every corporation, every nonprofit is different. And the way that business is conducted inside of any organization, it's up to you to dip your toe in the water and find out, is this organization for me? And so there's, you know, a, a small period of time where we're getting to know each other. Does this work? Does this make sense? Are you at a, a phase in your business where we can actually be impactful um, and we want to work, each, work with each other? We, um, in, in every single case, go into a phase of design thinking. And for um, every startup who is listening in today or has an interest in starting something or dabbling in the space, we really, really want you to lean into the concept of human-centered design. That's keeping humans at the center of the things that we're doing. And the reason why that's so important, especially as it relates to developing for the aging market for people 50 plus or lower or higher than that number is because I bet you, you know, of the hundreds plus people that were here on, um, here viewing the pitch, I bet you we have a crop of really smart people that we're tuning in, right? And what often mm -hmm. happens is when you're a smart person or you work with smart people, guess what we do? We do what we think is the smartest thing to do because we're smart folks. And sometimes we skip that really important step of asking the end consumer what they think, what they want. Should we design this button this way? Does this color work? 
Um, do people like to hold things a certain way? We just start developing things. And so there is a period of time that we spend in that design thinking human centered design phase where we're getting questions answered. We're asking what are those burning questions that you as an organization are really, really looking to have answered and we help them to answer those questions. From there, there are an array of different things, a lot of different options from co-creation to um, providing some type of pilot services with um, partners that we have across the country. So there are lots of different paths that we can go down depending on um, depending on the startup. But I will say in almost every instance, there is a human centered design component that helps us to really, really help startups ask, answer some of those key questions. Beautiful. And, and I will say that that's part of the work with agency as well, is that we are a community of innovators that are focused on the aging journey. And so uh, all of our member companies do help each other out, um, especially if you've got complementary products or services. Um, so we have one company that does matchmaking between caregivers and potential clients in the home for, for home care. And she's opened up her platform um, to allow other agency members to, it's like a little pop-up shop, right, to sell some of their products, but also, um, especially those that are in the earlier stage, to get feedback, like direct feedback from uh, caregivers and using some of these products and services in the home or, you know, for, for um, older adults use them independently and so forth. So I, I wholeheartedly agree that the more we can get feedback, uh, because it's important that, um, that we hear from, from people themselves, what are their unmet needs, it's equally important that we hear from large organizations to say, well, this is how we could commercialize and meet that unmet need in a way that's economically suitable and so forth, but also full of joy and desire and, 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 and so forth. Um, and yeah. so, uh, so we're, we, we, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really happy that you, you mentioned our membership, right? I mean, it's, it's no secret that we do have a, a robust membership. You know, you, you said the number 38 million, we have a, a, a very strong and dedicated set of volunteers all across the country. Um, and I know that for a lot of startups, when they hear that number or they hear, they hear any distribution number, right? It's like, wow, that's a great number. And it would be great to get my product or my service in the hands of those folks. And right, as a startup, I understand that thinking. We really encourage our startups to think differently, right? Because what we're not going to do is we're not going to see the, the, the best and brightest um, innovation or product and service and send it out to our 38 million members. It's not what we're going to do, right? Okay. Is we're going to help you answer key questions to help to help you to make sure that your product is developed in a way that attracts the audience that you want to attract, right? Mm. And so for us, and, and that's that's a tip for any, any large organization that you're going into, how can that organization be a great collaborator slash partner for you to help you solve key to help you solve um, issues that you're having to answer key questions? Are you thinking strategically about this or after, are you going after shiny objects? Because a lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the startup space, as you know, Danielle, Sometimes we want to grow fast and sometimes yeah. you can grow too mm -hmm. fast and get too many people and you're not quite ready. And so we really, um, you know, encourage our startups to think about what are those burning questions that you're looking to solve for that we can convene a group of people to really give you some valuable, valuable key feedback so you can fine tune your product or service in just the way that you like. Got it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, so our judges are still conferring. Uh, so again, thank you to the audience. Um, in, in the spirit of, of that design process, um, the more uh, detail that you can provide feedback to these companies, the better. Um, down to like the littlest design feature um, to the big strategic business model innovation. And I think that's the other interesting thing that um, we didn't have a chance really to dig into too much. Um, well, we did touch on it in some of, the, some of the talks, but like the business model innovation is almost as important as what you're designing for so that we can get these products and services out to the customers uh, that, that need them, um, you know, considering all of the other stakeholders uh, like the insurance companies and uh, manufacturers and, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, supply chain um, and so forth. And, and certainly distribution through like senior living communities, you know, campus settings, uh, congregate care settings as well. Um, so, uh, so, so Jacqueline, just give us like your crystal ball. Like if we think about, like we saw so many great innovations right now. Um, what do you guys look at towards the future future? Like what are the, the, the big trends that, that are getting you like really excited at AARP um, that really are gonna help improve the aging journey? Yep, absolutely. So um, even though I don't really love the term aging in place anymore, like I'm, I'm totally okay. 
that term, I do um, greatly still see and still am pitched by a number of startups that are still um, pounding the pavement and making sure that you can age in place, right? Clearly, I don't have a, a replacement for that phrase yet, but you can age in the home that you love in a safe and effective way. And I think right now, the times that we're in, um, it's clearly being in the middle of a pandemic is even more of a proof point that it's important for people to feel safe, to age in a place that they have grown to curate and love. And so we continue to see more solutions, including a solution that we developed from our own internal staff pitch competition um, that really addresses that uh, challenge and that desire to age, um, to age in the place that you've curated and you've um, grown to design in a way that you truly, truly love. Um, we continue to see um, data and not only um, conversations around the owning of your data, but also how you are monetizing data from a health tech standpoint that continues to be a trend. Um, and I, and mm -hmm. I personally look forward to seeing what um, new directions um, our startups take um, on, on that journey as well. So those are just two. We continue to see, you know, in-home in monitoring devices and, and also uh, one big one that I think is really, really relevant right now um, is the ability to track care at home in an effective way. And mm. the reason why that's important, um, and one of my colleagues brought this up to, to our team uh, a couple months ago is, you know, COVID is keeping people away from those uh, typical appointments and those appointments that sometimes we say we're going to skip that we don't really need to go to the doctor for that and then you let six months go by and then it's compounded into something bigger and so what are the in-home um, care assessment devices that can plug in or easy that are effective and efficient that allow people to still track what's going on with their health if they're in fear of going to the doctor for something that they think is small that could eventually get larger and so I think over the next few months especially not knowing where we're going to end up from a pandemic standpoint I'm seeing more solutions in that area is also very interesting. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, well, uh, our judges have returned. I see Aparna, uh, let's see. Uh, I see Aparna and Catherine and Susan. And so Sarah, um, uh, can you guys get back on video and just, um, we just love some final, uh, just some final thoughts before we announce, announce the winner. Catherine, if you can uh, take yourself off mute. Oh, and, oh sorry. Yep, that's okay. It's uh, yeah, six o'clock. My mind doesn't work anymore. <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> technology. Um, I just want to say thank you to the nine startups who had the privilege of, I mean, I feel like I had the privilege of hearing you um, present and to pitch because um, one of the things actually that I don't think Danielle, you actually asked us this at the beginning, but it was, it was our homework assignment was like, what excites you about this space? And for me coming from the aging services policy world is what excites me is when I see products that celebrate older adults and celebrate fun. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that all of right. you hit on an element of that in terms of celebrating mm -hmm. that, you know, the older adult market is not a market to be um, developing products for in a healthcare sense or you know a strictly kind of medical sense, but you all celebrated older adults and I really applaud you for that. So thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Catherine. And thank you for the work that you do on behalf of all older adults uh, across the Commonwealth. Aparna. Gosh, how can I go after Catherine? That was so well said. Um, I mean, I echo her thoughts. Thank you for the privilege of allowing us to hear more about your business model, hearing about your successes and the, the barriers that we can help you reduce through this. And Danielle and Jacqueline, thank you so much for hosting this. Um, it's such a terrific forum to spread the word, particularly given COVID and everything that's happening. So I appreciate being invited and being a part of this. And I am so inspired by all of you founders um, for what you've accomplished so far. Excellent, thank you. And Sarah, I don't see you. I don't know, uh, am I missing you? <laughs> Sarah, maybe Sarah's already off in the, in the virtual networking. So, um, <laughs> so, so indeed we had nine companies, ve nine very different solutions um, for very different um, target customers and target markets. So each one of these companies can take a different path for next steps. So for anybody who's on the call, we've got still like a strong showing on the call. Uh, please, I encourage you to reach out to the companies, introduce them, 
uh, to their next, you know, their next important meeting. Um, but the one company that, uh, that we've, uh, the judges selected to move on to the next step in the process with AARP uh, for an opportunity to potentially um, move on to the uh, AARP grand pitch finale is, drum roll please, Wheelpad. Julie Leinberger, thank you so much for the extraordinary work that you're doing to bring adults safely at home and to reconnect families. Um, and to Jacqueline's point, like make sure that the caregiving process remains dignified and full of joy. So Julie, we all applaud you and the work that you're doing. Oh. <laughs> well, now you've got, you've brought tears to me again. <laughs> thank you, I'm so excited. We just love every every story every family that we go with it's just um it is so heartwarming so thank you everybody it's hard work thank well you. and thank you um and thank you to everybody uh this is sacred work that we're doing together as a community and i think the more that we can uplift each other in whatever way that we can um let's just make every day a great day so thank you, Jacqueline, and all the support um, from AARP. And um, thank you to, <laughs> to my dear friends who came together for judging. Thank you to all the founders and all the hard work that you put into your shows. Um, it really paid off. And, um, and let's go have a virtual drink. <laughs> um, but uh, if everybody could go um, to the Remo room, I'm gonna put actually the, um, I, I really forgot to actually uh, give you the URL for agency. Uh, we would also love to welcome uh, any, all new members to agency as connectors. Um, if you want to be part of our community and be part of these pitch fests and have access to the experts in our network for direct office hours and connections, um, if you'd like to, uh, you know, the contribute your expertise to our community, um, we, we absolutely would welcome you. Please go to cic.com slash agency. If you'd like to join, you go to the co-work tab. Um, so we have co-working space at the Cambridge Innovation Center, um, as well as the online community. So uh, we look forward to continuing this conversation. And Julie, congratulations. Congratulations to everybody. Stay in touch with us so we know what happens next for you. And um, we'll see you in the networking room. And thank you to everybody uh, who stayed online with us throughout the whole show. See you next thank time. You. Well, thank you. you. Thank you everyone who was so engaged in the chat. It was such a pleasure for us as the Venture Cafe to host you all. It was such an inspirational event. Thank you so much.